on board, I'm fairly certain I'll still be working at a minimum of 12 hours a day. So, well, just hoping for one day off. <laughs> all we want to do is work. Like, like a, a true day or two off would would be pretty happy for me right now. So, yeah. Yeah. But I, I mean, I, I love what I do. And so it's people would say it's not work when you love what you do. It's, it's a shit ton of work, um, but I don't mind doing it. So um, yeah, it doesn't a, mean. It's not that I don't, I don't necessarily believe in the, uh, if you love what you do, you'll never work for the day in your life. <laughs> I work hard enough than I ever have. I probably even yeah. have more stress on me than I ever have. But yeah, this because it's what you want to do, it it's less um, daunting, maybe less intimidating, less you know it'll be something different every day. Yeah, you're passionate about what you're doing, and it makes it it makes it easier. It makes it something you want to do. It's the what you love to do, and it is work, but it's not. It feels less like a job in a way, but not. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird. And I hope everybody can uh, has the opportunity to feel that at some point in time in their lives. Oh. It's a dream. It's a dream, man. Does it work? <laughs> oh, you don't turn with it. Damn it. Never mind. <laughs> You would turn with it, but no, you don't. No. All right, we're just we're just gonna have you like that. Okay. Just so I can be here. Be here. Um, Hi, I'm here. Hi. Uh, so, um, so we spent zero dollars this year on on Facebook page uh, advertising ads. So all our advertising dollars for Facebook went to boosting our weekly posts. Up until I think we started our little contest, I had an ongoing ad for just our page. So our page would hit. Um, and we would probably average, I think, in the year 2022, we had just over 2,000 new page likes. Um, and a lot of that was because of that. But it was targeted to our service area. So most of those people were within service area. I think it was money well spent. Um, this last year we added just under a thousand or so far just under a thousand um, with zero dollars being pushed. And all that is true word of mouth and organic growth. Um, I think especially for young trucks, I think that's, that's a good thing to do um, to kind of boost those page likes. Um, now you can't you can't do that without having content. Um, so it's great to have you know to for someone to go and visit your page. They're going to look and see what's there before they like most of them. Most of them don't just hit the like on a a notification unless they know you. Um, so you still have to have the content. Um, content, 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 man. Everything's content. <laughs> The more you do, the more you're going to be out there, the more people are going to see you. Um, and back to, you were saying on his video that it, it didn't seem to be, oh my goodness. It didn't. <laughs> Skippy had it enough of me. He threw me out the window. <laughs> um, he's, the video that um, Nom Nom had didn't, it didn't feel food driven. Uh, customer experience driven. And I think that's a, a pretty good misconception of what you need to post on media, especially depending on the source uh, or the, the platform. Um, I think for something like Instagram, a food trucks page needs to be food on like Instagram. I think for something like, uh, short videos either on Facebook, YouTube, or even TikTok, I think you can be a little bit more less food driven. You can have a little bit more fun. Um, especially with TikTok. I don't think any of your posts need to be food related for a food truck on TikTok. I think it helps a little bit. Um, but I think largely you can 
be silly and be goofy and it still relates to the food a little bit and you can have some food in your post, but you get followers on a platform like TikTok, and people are going to want, they'll see your truck say, oh my gosh, those are the people from TikTok," And they'll stop to your truck, whether they've had the food or not, because they've seen it somewhere on social media, on the internet, that whole internet famous thing, you know, it's a, it's a freaking thing. And it's a weird thing. Um, but you'll have people stop at your truck if you have a presence on some of the other platforms because they'll see you on the platform, whether it's just on a, whether they follow you or not, like on TikTok, the for you page, use random shit on your algorithm comes through. Um, and you know, they, it's, they put two and two together and they're driving by or that leads them to find you somewhere else and do a Google search for PB and J's. Um, so I think that kind of thing can't be understated. Um, I think depending on the platform, you your videos need to be a certain way, or can or or conversely, conversely, can be something completely different. If any of that makes sense, I don't think you have to be all food all the time. And the content doesn't have to be the same all the time. As long yeah, as it's fun, I, as long as it's engaging content. Yeah, I I think. I don't know. I had like four posts last spring before we, or as we were our opening week that were, there wasn't a, a piece of food mentioned or seen in any of those videos. And there were some of our highest viewed TikTok videos, you know, I was outside the trailer, but I don't, you couldn't even tell it was a food truck because there was so much GD snow. Um, <laughs> and we were at the, the tongue end of the trailer. So it's not like, there was zero graphics anywhere. Um, so yeah, I, I, it's, you need to push the food, but I think different platforms require different things. So I think for, uh, yeah, it's just what people, what are people looking for on certain platforms? So, and I think, yeah, Facebook is, yeah, it absolutely is. Figure out what people want. I mean, people are people going to want you know cute funny dog videos or cat videos or food videos or somebody mm-hmm. failing at something videos. Yeah, and I think, like what's on I your, think that's another thing. What's on your for you page? What what's type that? of videos come up? What type of videos come up on your for you page? Well, uh, a whole <laughs> weird smattery of things. <laughs> Yeah, my so algorithm me- is so far out there. Um, well, let's see. Let's pull up what the first couple of things are here. So mine are typically, there? typically uh, food reviews. There's like two or three food reviewers I watch. There are two or like uh, two or three like funny videos I watch, and like some of the ones that come up are like major car accidents gone wrong. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll get a I'll get a string of those every once. I'm like, how did this happen? <laughs> yeah, so like, that algorithm works a lot differently than most. So, the number of times you watch a video plays a huge factor. Yeah. Um, so I think <laughs> so. There are some videos, and I'm sure you've seen them, where there is it's a picture. Someone posts a picture of something, yeah. like like an action shot of something. What and then it'll play like eight times before you realize there's nothing. nothing going to happen in the yeah. <laughs> yeah and that and that changes the algorithm quite a bit for them so it's um yeah TikTok's a funny thing man uh, <laughs> trying to figure out how to get there um but right now uh, over the last couple of weeks we're averaging I don't know about two hundred and thirty views a video which isn't a lot at all um. 75 followers you know it's it's a slow burn um waiting for us to say something stupid or if you could get in a car accident that'd be great we can post that <laughs> thanks for wishing me harm <laughs> I, I don't want you harm just the i mean just a, a little like a fender bender and someone comes pounding on your window yeah a little old lady comes up yelling at you make sure you turn the camera so we can see 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Somehow, get out to Arizona. Somehow get out to Arizona and get pulled over by that cop and then and then start spewing uh, sovereign citizen speech. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, that, that, that's good stuff. I'm hoping people are listening. That's good stuff. I didn't really think about a lot of that, but now I do. Um, I, so, and this is the kind of the time of the year that I really think about it. And I'm like, okay, we're going to dedicate, we're going to get some stuff out. And then the season rolls around. It's like, I'm so damn busy, you know? So to be so able to you, offload some. Sorry. Hmm? Yeah, okay. I'm in there. So do you know who, um, Jeff Ryan Duffy is? Uh, maybe. I don't think so. You ever watch Bar Rescue? Yeah. So he was one of the original chefs on the, on the, okay. like the first. So anyway, so I got a chance to meet him at, um, um, the World Food Championship. Okay. Um, he did, uh, so day one, he did, he did some sort of speech on the big stage saying that barbecue needs to be done low and slow. And of course that, that weekend I was cooking on cans. <laughs> so I saw him walking around and, and one of my teammates said, Hey, that's what he said. And I said, Hey, Jeff, you want, you want to taste the brisket? And he's like, he's like, sure. He came over. I said, I heard about what you said. Anyway, so <laughs> he's like, well, how long was it cooked? I said, five hours. He's like, we'll see. So it was leftover. It was still in the warmer from the day before, but <laughs> still fan. I mean, Wagyu brisket, Wagyu brisket anyway. Yeah. So I gave him a piece and he ended up doing like an Instagram story with me, like selling a piece of brisket to him, not selling like money wise, yeah. like selling it. And then, and then he did a second part where he tasted it. So it was really good. Blah, blah, blah. But now I can't find that video. You know why? Cause it's a story. And yeah. so it makes me think about stories. Like, do stories really do something? Because I would have really wanted that video. Like, just, just right. to have it. And now I can't. And it really pisses me off. Um, but these stories, are stories worth it because they go away? Where your posts don't. He had 24,000. This was this was done on Instagram. He has 24, either 24,000 followers on Instagram, I think it was. But then he also uh, gave I, me his marketing person card to call her. Yeah, I think I'm not super familiar with stories and the intricacies or the minutia of that. Uh, I think that more people will get notified if you post a story. Okay. Like that is a that is a, a notification worthy type of event, yeah. In the eyes of Facebook slash Instagram, um, versus a post, you know, um, where if you just do a regular post, I th- it'll show up in people's timeline, but there's not necessarily a, hey, PB and J's, you know, yeah, posted a new story, um. That's my understanding. I'm not sure how accurate that is. It just it made me unfortunately. It made me sad that I couldn't find the video again. But right, just, if something's gone. It's almost like a longer Snapchat. Because isn't the Snapchat the same thing? Like you yeah. post, if you post a video or a picture, or whatever, and after it's read, it's gone. Yep. Or something of that. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's it sucks for you. Yeah. <laughs> for the Instagram, because you wanted the, the clip. Um, Still didn't give me an Instagram. <sighs> me off, but whatever. <laughs> um, yeah. I. Are you drinking Kool Aid? Uh, mango Monster. Oh. <laughs> it looked like one of the plastic bottles because you're a little grainy right now. Like one of the little plastic Kool Aid bottles, they twist the top off. Right. <laughs> yeah, I know um, what you're talking about. So, yeah, yeah, I think there's definitely content appropriate stuff for that, to where it's almost like a TikTok ish type of content. Yeah, you know, 
or maybe, maybe that's one of those that you use you use stories for your change of location, like last minute changes and stuff. Yeah. You know, I mean, that, something that's that there work. and then it's gone where people aren't going to be confused tomorrow when they see that they don't look at the date of your post. Cause you never know how things are going to pop up in people's timelines. Yeah. Someone could see your post a day late. Which you know, is, like, oh, you're... There used to be something on Facebook where you could set your feed to show you the most recent stuff. Yeah. And that, that part is gone. I can't find it anyway. So yeah, I get stuff on my on my feed from three days ago. I'm like, a lot of good that helps me now, or stuff that happened over the weekend that I'm seeing on Monday that I could have, you know, signed up for or something like that. You know, it's very good. I would like to quickly welcome or say hello to all the people. Oh boy. All the people watching on YouTube. Uh for YouTube people. It looks like we got JT. Uh, we had a comment there, and I sorry, I did not have my chat open on YouTube, guys. Um, Skippy looks like he's about to do a political truck talk rant video after his favorite politician just lost. <laughs> you do have that um, TikTok. I'm in my truck and mad at the voting poll <laughs> type of vibe. <laughs> Tell me how you feel about guns, Skippy. <laughs> Guns don't kill people. People kill people. <laughs> How about that? Is that fine? Can I say that? Yeah, Probably not on YouTube. That's great. I got three people watching currently on YouTube, so uh, welcome to you all. Uh, happy to have you. So one social media topic, I believe if you go to our, our messaging uh, on our Facebook, uh, our good friend Isaac might have had some uh, questions for us. Oh, yes. Hold on. Let me get there real quick. Uh, I'm normally the question guy, Isaac. I apologize. I can't be it. That's okay. Uh, I know his one for you. Skippy, you mentioned the cost of propane. Oh, boy. Sorry, it shifted on me. Uh, the cost of propane for your new trailer. Have you any idea on how long that will last? Which I'm guessing you probably don't until yet. No, definitely not. <laughs> the long answer is I've been told from somebody that uses a freebase steam table. I don't know. Prior, he's going to fill 100 pounds every four uses. Um, wow. I have a three-base, I have a three-base steam table um, and a just a big propane stockpot range. So I'm guessing I can probably get eight to ten out of it, maybe. So it's two weeks, probably. That's a you have 100 pound cylinder. Yeah. Is that right? Yes. So hopefully okay. two weeks out of it. Yeah, and you won't know until you're, until you're running. Oh. And did you get a? Do you have a spare yet? A spare hundred pound cylinder? No. Okay. I don't have an. I, I, I don't would... have an. I don't have an original one either. So. Okay. Um, I didn't come with a tank. <laughs> I had to buy one. So yeah, instead of buying two hundred pounders, at least right now, I'd get your one, get that filled, and then yeah. just carry a twenty pounder with you, and that way you'll have an idea how long it'll last without having to. And that way, when you get back home, you can swap them out without having to carry an extra 100-pound cylinder in your pickup truck. Yeah, I really don't want to carry anything. I'm, I'm actually using my tonneau cover now in my pickup truck because my generator is not in the back. It's so Finally. Good. <laughs> so, so great. Just careful. Your truck's going to drive a whole lot different without that weight back there in the winter. <laughs> You're going to have to put some cinder blocks or some sandbags back there. <laughs> um, I'll tell everybody, I'll, I'll do a quick plug for this. So when I picked up the new trailer, which I didn't have it weighed, but we're we're saying it's a little bit shy of eleven thousand pounds, and that's not with any food, that's not with anything really in it, including the generator, or whatever. So I installed the, it's called the Roadmaster Active Suspension, and basically what it is, it's a bolt-on kit that gives it's almost like a helper spring and a cantilever suspension in the back. Um, it did raise my rear end up like an inch, but when I put the trailer on my truck, it pretty much squats it back to original riding range to where I okay. actually have to increase my hitch height to have my trailer ride level. Really? So it was about 500, I think it was 600 bucks installed. Um, and so far it's definitely worth it. 
in case anybody wants you want to, if you don't want to buy a weight distribution hood um this would be probably a good instead of maybe even instead of airbags i did this instead of airbags because airbags are a it would have been like twenty four hundred dollars to install airbags plus the air compressor and all that sort of stuff so you look into the roadmaster active suspension um i give it a two skippy thumb size up for thumb size. It's skippy size, so little thumbs. Yeah, little, th- little, 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 it'll thumb. It'll thumb. <laughs> um, anyway, so yeah, that I haven't bought the hundred pound tank yet. It's still at the shop. I don't know when I'll get it back, but uh, hopefully before <laughs> March. Uh, but that was kind of the next uh, top. Well, sorry, we have another question. You have a question from Mister Eisen. Yeah, uh, let me get back there. <clears throat> um. Josh, you mentioned an event you did in October. I think it was a trunk or treat or something of that nature. How did that event go? Um, so we had two trunk or treats. Uh, one of them was early, uh, a few days before Halloween at the farm that we typically set up at the, on the weekends. Um, they projected they had about 2,500 to 3,000 people there. Um, we sold out. Um, we did good. Um, I, I don't know that we could have sold much more food than we did. Um, weather was iffy, uh, a little bit rainy, a little bit drizzly, um, but a good turnout. Um, we would definitely go back and do that one again. Uh, the other one we did on Halloween and, uh, Halloween was the, uh, the evening day scenario where we had, I think six inches of snow, um, on the ground. So yeah, great times, fun, good work. Um, uh, yeah, that one didn't go uh, as well. Uh, there wasn't a lot of people out and about. A lot of trick or treating got canceled or moved. Um, so it was just yeah, just one of those things. That it was weather related. Um, that one we had done last year and it was okay. It was more of a, a community type of thing where we wanted to be out in the community and kind of just helping out a little bit and doing something fun like that. So um, not one that we expected to make a whole lot of money on anyway. So. And then for you both, when it comes to beverages, what have you found that works and what doesn't? How are you buying? An... I'm sorry, I was going to interrupt when you were done. I didn't front with no you problem. Too. Yeah, you didn't want to know about yours. I know. Thanks, <laughs> Isaac. Go back to the regular scheduled program. Yours was fair, you said? Uh, mine was fair. I sold out of hot dogs. Should have brought more hot dogs. Yeah, I, and I think we will definitely have a couple of events next year where we probably bring hot dogs a little bit more often. So I think we had hot dogs at our farm trunk or treat, if I remember right. We ran that as a special. So, um, yeah. Okay. Now for you both, when it comes to beverage, it, when it comes to beverage, Jesus Christ. you're doing it on purpose. Damn it. Let's talk about beverage. Don't make me mute you. All right. Have you found what have you found that works and doesn't? How are you buying? And are you buying a lot of of uh, are you buying a lot a few times a year or not? Uh, we are thinking of running with just water, coke, and diet coke, but not sure. We don't want to lug soda around all the time. Skippy. Oh, what do you do for beverages? Um, selling beverages for the first year, I probably pulled out the coolers four times and I was at just a large event roadside. I never, rarely do I ever sell beverages um, just because I hate lugging them around. Um, however, that will now change because in the new trailer, I have a beverage cooler. Basically it's a glass merchandiser that they can see and will carry pop and water. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much where that goes. Yep. Um, We've done beverages since day one. Um, we, what? I'm sorry, Skippy. Were you going to say something no. else? No, please. <laughs> Some people, I hate it. I, I hate doing beverages. Can't stand it. Please, please, well, please. You hate them, but we love you. Um, yeah. Monster. <laughs> this show runs on Monster. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, we've done beverages since day one. We started out doing Fago products um, just because it's Michigan-based, and we were trying to do Michigan-based type of stuff, a little tie-in. But um, 
and we were just filling uh, big coolers um, and had them out in front of the trailer and people could self-serve after purchasing. Um, it was a big, giant pain in the ass taking coolers in and out of the truck, um, making sure ice is stocked. We were probably spending uh, in peak summer um, probably five to six hundred dollars a month for ice. Um because a lot of times we were refilling them twice a day. So fill them in the morning and then we'd have to fill them before dinner service, typically uh, reload the ice if it got hot enough. So um, just because with coolers, I mean, if they're not pushed all the way back down to close um, and they're getting open and closed so often, um, they just don't hold ice as often as well. So um, this last year uh, we started keeping uh, pop in our, uh, commercial fridge on the trailer. Um, we kind of worked some things around with inventory and stuff to where we weren't keeping as much food stock in that fridge on a day-to-day -day basis, um, which allowed us some space to be able to keep soft drinks. Um, and then we got a, a soft drink organizer spring loaded. Um, so we can hold, uh, we're doing, I think we're doing about 16 to 18 of each pop and uh, bottles of water. Um, and that has worked a ton better other than uh, it can get, a, if we're super busy, it gets a little in the way to go back there and get a pop when someone's making sandwiches. But um, seems to be working a whole lot better and everybody's happy not to be doing, uh, pulling tr coolers out of the uh, truck anymore. So um, those got pretty heavy when they were fully loaded with pop and ice. I'm trying to lug those up and over the hitch on some days. So we're up and over the, the uh, tailgate. Um, but yeah, now we're, we're on Coke products. So we do Coke diet, Coke Sprite, and then bottles of water. Uh, as far as where we're buying them, uh, I'm getting ours from Costco, usually a couple cases at a time. Um, we don't sell a ton of pop. Uh, we sell enough for it to be worthwhile. Um, but keep in mind that pop and water both have expiration dates on them and they're not, the shelf life is not as long as you might think they are. Um, so, um, I'm at Costco enough. Personally, I'm at least once a week to get briskets and stuff. Um, so it's kind of I, I, once a week, I'll pick up a couple cases of each if we need them. Um, you know, it's. Yeah. And so those don't have to be refrigerated. What's that? Yeah, so I mentioned Costco. Mentioned, yeah, we were there uh, last week because I picked something up for dinner and they had prime briskets for, for the first time. Yeah, they make they, they every once in a while do these specific cut of steak that is absolutely fantastic and that's what we're gonna have for Thursday. Yeah. anyway so they had prime brisket for 449 a pound like you showed me mm -hmm. they had six in the case the smallest one was 22 pounds mm -hmm. yeah wait a minute that there's yeah. no way I wish that was a 130 a pound case of brisket yeah <laughs> well it was, no there was they only do Three or four max, if it's that. Big. Well, I thought you said there was six in the case. No, in the in the actual display case. Oh, okay, not in the box. Gotcha. Correct. No. <laughs> like, was, Judas no. Priest. <laughs> but, there was, but at least three, at least three of those, maybe four, came out of a case. So yeah, that was crazy. That was we like, definitely. I've definitely had those cases to where we're pushing ninety pounds for four briskets type of thing. Um. So my, my guy is good enough to where we usually go, you know, I'll ask him for specific size cases if he has them, kind of yeah, give him the weights we're looking for. Um, and that usually gets us at a pretty good average for, uh, personally, I like cooking 15 to 16 pound briskets just because I, I, for the most part, know how long they're going to take to cook, you know? So that's, that's where I like to be. We've definitely Unless been there when it's been 50 to 60 pound cases. <laughs> yeah. And that's when I'm asking for that, asking them for the heaviest ones. Um, he's also um, been kind enough for me to box up a specialized case that I pull out of the display cabinet. Yeah. So I've done, um, but he's the only one that'll do it for me. <laughs> the meat manager is the only one that'll do it for me. And, but my so. Sam's guy will do it for me. Um, also at Costco, I mentioned that one of the guys in Dallas um, moved on to the final round. 
because he cooked a uh, pork belly cinnamon roll. Yep. And you can go to Costco, and instead of buying pork belly in the cryovac case, you can actually buy it already sliced. Yep. And I think it's the same price, but I think all he did was take those slices and just roll it like a cinnamon I mean, roll. it and roll it like a cinnamon <laughs> roll. Like, yeah. I almost want to do that now for a cinnamon roll. It looks easy I, to do. <laughs> I want to say I think we tried it. Maybe not. I know we've talked about it at a minimum. Because I think yeah. it came through on my Facebook before the World Food Championship. Like I, we saw, I think we talked about it earlier in the year. Oh. Um, and it does seem like this one of the easiest things to do. Yeah. But, and he actually yeah, put a frosting. I, he actually put a buttercream frosting on it too. Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> great <laughs> but anyway i'm like oh it's cool. um when we started this podcast today we were talking about uh the fact that i haven't really done anything um and you said barbecue related i said no i've been thinking about a lot of stuff and the one the one thing the other topic that we had uh was the topic that you and i discussed about booking events on the same day and whether whether for me whether that would be whether it be something i could pull off or not not having a at least one full-time employee and the advice you gave me was do it and figure it out so okay. i did it i'm trying to figure it out for like a week now um but i'm thinking about it and i'm like Okay, so I just committed to it or just sent in my application for it or whatever. If I get selected, I'm going to need five people for that day, mm -hmm. and, including myself. And I don't think I've ever had five people working today ever. <laughs> it's like, oh boy, what am I going to do now? So that's, that's the stuff that I'm thinking about. Like, am I just going to go full throttle with booking a second truck and with, with events, we're just doing events for right now. Nothing like we or weekly stops or daily stops or whatever, but mainly just events. Oh, who's this? <laughs> oh, it was an automated uh, automated vehicle. Oh, cool! A Toyota Sienna minivan, automated vehicle. Anyway, so those are the type of things that I've been definitely thinking about as a. Uh, doing that and i never thought i'd be thinking about doing that before you like i thought you would be my roadmap but it sounds like i'm going to be your roadmap. i mean we we do i mean we've done it uh multiple events at the same time I, not in the <laughs> same vein that you are um, not truck related like you you've dropped off catering yeah, we, or whatever yeah we don't we haven't done two roadside events at the same time um yeah, I mean it's it's no different than doing one. You just got to double everything. You just figure out how to pull another truck when you don't have another trailer. Another, I'm just like pulling another trailer when you don't have another truck. Um, you, well, you take one, drop it off, come back, get the other one, and go get that. One. And that's what I'm going to do. Is if, if there's events that I can drop the big trailer off, I will. If I can take the other trailer somewhere. At worst case, look to rent one for the day. Mm -hmm. Then I still have uh, to have two, uh, Yeah, I mean, you can find someone to pull a trailer, you know, 30 miles for you, probably. You know, it doesn't have to be one of your staff, you know, you got a buddy that can is comfortable pulling a trailer. Say, hey, can you give me a hand for, you know, a little bit today and a little bit tomorrow and drive this for me? Yeah, you know, to charge me $400 round trip. <laughs> Diesel prices were expensive. So I'm like, forget you. <laughs> but anyway, yes, I, um, yeah, that that'll be that'll be my next hurdle. Yeah, uh, if you look to rent a truck, I would avoid Enterprise and uh, look on Turo first. So I'm a big fan. Okay. Free plug for Turo. Big fan. I, I that's I used them a couple times this year when we had I was having some work done on the truck. And it was able to bar it. You're, it's Airbnb for vehicles. 
So you're, yeah. you're renting somebody else's personal vehicle. I was able to get a pickup truck that was a 10 minute drive from me and use it for the day. So, um, worked out great and way cheaper than what I was going to pay through enterprise. So for their yeah. commercial fleet. So yeah. Well, there's there's quick my quick thought. Um, I did get, so, uh, Michaela seems to be the bride name of the year this year. I already have oh. two Michaela's booked for weddings and I had another request for a quote from another Michaela yesterday. Um, so she, she uh, wants, uh, her date is the same as another date that we are already booked for a wedding and I am considering doing two weddings at the same time. So. Oh, yeah. 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 So but again, have, instead of, hold on, instead of looking for a festival truck or another roadside truck or something like that, would you ever invest in just like a small catering trailer? Just so you like you can throw some electric uh, in there with a warm with a warmer, you know, something like that. I I think a, a delivery vehicle would be before a, a catering trailer. Cause you and I, I mean, we've talked about this before, where our typical catering is way different. You do more off the truck stuff, I do way more buffet drop off stuff. Yeah. Um so in this instance, uh the one that we have booked, they want service off the truck. Um, and the other one is one of the stipulations that I say, I can do a buffet service for you. Uh, we wouldn't be able to have the truck on site. So we'd work the one off the trailer and then send whoever with Cambros and chafing dishes off to the other one to do that and work that wedding. So, yeah. Yeah. But that's, yeah, I, that's going to be. I'm a delivery curious. type van is closer to that other. So, I'm curious how you're gonna how you priced out the the off the truck wedding full menu or what what they wanted. So yeah, that one is they wanted brisket, pork, and a couple sides. So we're going to be plating and handing out. Okay. So everybody's pretty much getting the same thing, unless someone comes up and said, "Hey, can I not get mac and cheese? <laughs> can I get some extra mashed potatoes?" Other than that, we're gonna we're gonna be flying or assembling plates all the same for the most part. So, Can I ask what you, what you charge per plate? What our normal catering for buffet would be, since we for the the size of the wedding, we would have had the trailer on site anyways, and it's close to home, so we would have had the trailer on site. So really, it's not. Where there's no extra staff involved. It, it's a two person like job regardless. Um, hold on. Let me look. I don't even remember. What, hold on. Let me let me go find it for you. Depends on what that menu was. Um, they said mac and mac. I was guessing. I, uh, for instance, I think it was two proteins and three sides. I think. I <laughs> Oh my god, really? I was logged in earlier today. Send a verification code. Oh. Okay, when I didn't have my cursor in the stupid box. All right. Damn. No, no. All right. Invoices. Be careful, those boxes can get some trouble. Especially when things come back out of them. Um, I do them for life. Invoice. What's the name? Fastener. The name was Michaela. <laughs> Uh, no, this is not one of the Michaela's. This is Melissa, oh. though. So everything has been oh. M's so far. Um, so twenty six hundred is what they were. The invoice was for. Let's see. So we're we were twenty six a plate. Pork brisket, beans, mac and cheese, and chicken. So three three proteins, two sides. So are they getting? And the, um, everybody's getting everything. 
Yeah. Or they pick up rookie. That's what they asked for. So yeah. Okay. Yep. They want everybody to have the option to have everything. So. So are you but, gonna? And I know, took one I'm portion of everything for everybody. Essentially, yeah. We'll probably go a little bit a smidge lighter, but um, for the most part, yeah. And, and that's what I was going to say. We've talked about that before is when you go to an event and they have two pro teams, do you, and I used to do like 75% of each, you know? Yeah. Which accounts for some people having both, some people only having one. Um, but we've cut it so close on so many of those. So unless yeah. we are actually physically serving people, Right now, we're just gonna do. We're gonna do every plan on everybody having some of everything, that's and that's right. just the way we're gonna cook. Which, which means sometimes we have a lot of food left over that we're leaving, but they're paying for it. You know. Yeah. So it's it's their food that they bought, and so I'm okay with it. Um, I think our pricing is still on par with most other caterers. Yeah. So. I think people really like the idea of, of being able to have leftovers as long as it's not an exorbitant amount of leftovers, which we've had a couple of those. Yeah. Where I, I, I get almost get annoyed now when I see people that are being polite when they're going through the buffet and it's just like a little tiny little bit of everything. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, load up your plate. Yeah, we, we, so we talked about um, when, when JT was on our podcast about laying out a buffet yeah um you know putting your cold side stuff up before basically putting your cheap stuff ahead of your expensive stuff <laughs> right but in, in talking with somebody yesterday we talked about or yeah, i talked to somebody yesterday who set up a buffet that exact same way and they literally took their plate and a bun and went to the other side of the <laughs> yeah they took their plate and bun and they went right to the meat and they worked their way that way <laughs> Instead of going down the line the way you're supposed to. I'm like, oh, Jeez. well, sometimes it doesn't work, damn it. Yeah, I, people are weird. <laughs> They're a fickle, funny little little bunch. Um, huh? So I think the big truck uh, decided to go down um, maybe the wrong road, and now he has to back up in the middle of Ann Arbor. But of course, it's oh. blocking the same road that I need to go down when we're done. Awesome. <laughs> anyway, um, what else we got? Anything for the next two minutes? Oh, I don't know. Probably not. Probably a good thing we didn't have Bubba on. We never would have gotten through half this shit. Yeah, but, but I'm glad to I... I talk. <laughs> <laughs> love you baba um no I, i'm glad that we were able to fill this time i was a little bit concerned but i knew with the uh the one topic that we would probably be able to manage that okay oh. <laughs> and i'm glad no one lost tempers and no feelings were hurt so right. no nope, it would have been better for hurt. ratings probably if we would have yelled at each other a little bit more but you know what josh maybe Go next time yourself. how about that Yes, you hear that, people? I told him to go F himself. You hear that? Subscribe to our YouTube channel, um, please. <laughs> uh, speaking of YouTube, we had another comment from uh, Bugs Moran. Mor I don't want to say Moran, but Bugs Moran, maybe? Uh, yeah. Are, are you guys familiar with Pig Out Roasters? And if so, what are your thoughts on them? Are you familiar? If I had to guess, it's more. it's like a maybe a rotisserie style propane powered uh roaster um i have not used mm -hmm. one so i can't tell you uh if you're looking for a pig uh i would look towards alvaron a-l-v-e-r-o-n cooking they're out of either south carolina or georgia i'm i am very familiar with those they're propane powered but they also have um he's also oh. charcoal too they're very good. Hey, uh, look, look, the, look these up when you're off the air, uh, Skippy. Okay. Um, nice. I mean, they're nice looking units. Um, yeah, they are. They are nice looking units. I am not familiar with them. I haven't used them. Um, we don't do whole hogs 
Um, if anybody else is familiar with those, um, it does look like a pretty nice whole uh, whole hog cooker. Um, yeah, they look nice. I, I'd, I'd be curious to get our hands on one. If uh, Pig Out Roasters wants to uh, send us one so that we can try one, that'd be great. <laughs> we will feature you everywhere. Um, well, that's what I got. That's what we got. Um, thanks, guys, for the questions. Thank you for the YouTube people that were uh, watching and uh, commenting. That's that's awesome. Happy to have you guys. Um, also on thanks. our Riverside link with the live audience. Um, it's great to have you guys live. Um, we did crack uh, the top 150 in food podcast for in India. <laughs> we also... We also made a quick appearance in the top 175 in the U.S. for food podcast. So um, briefly, we were there for a day. Um, so uh, all the help is appreciated, guys. Uh, I think that we can make it to the top 50 um, before our season starts. Uh, make sure you guys go out and share the podcast, uh, Apple Podcasts. Uh, make sure you subscribe or like or follow or whatever that uh, procedure is or wherever you listen to podcasts. So thank you, everybody. Appreciate it. Skippy, say goodbye. Bye, Skippy. Uh, next week, we should be at probably about the same time, maybe a little bit later, 8.45-ish start time. Uh, sorry with Skippy in his new job, and uh, I have kids to get on the bus uh, most Mondays, so um, we're kind of adjusting things. And we'll probably have uh, a change in day around Christmas and New Year's, so uh, stay posted for that, guys. Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful week, and we'll talk to you next Monday. Bye!